Welcome everyone. My name is Peter Huggins and I am the events manager for uh, the 2023 KSAS Masters Graduation Ceremony. I'll be leading today's presentation. I'm joined today by Alexandra Shirey, who is our social media manager, and Rebecca Stringham, our student success manager. Alexandra and Rebecca will be leading, will be monitoring the chat throughout the session. And as we go along, if you have any questions at all, feel free to post your questions using the Q&A, the little Q&A section so that we can get through everyone's questions throughout the, the next hour. And if you do me a favor, just real quick, I'd love to know where everyone's calling in from. If you could drop in the chat just where you're calling in from. I'm here in Washington, DC, and I'd love to know where everybody is. <laughs> Outstanding. I try to read them, but they're coming in so fast. This is amazing. Like San Diego, Hong Kong, Houston, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, DC, Toronto, Monterey Park, Malaysia, Minneapolis, Philly, Baltimore, Austin, DC. Oh, just Chicago. Uh, outstanding. Outstanding. Tampa. Uh, okay, Earth. I see, I see you. Um, <laughs> This is wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay, so here's today's agenda. We're going to talk, where is the 2023 KSAS Master's Graduation Ceremony? We're going to touch base on important dates and times. Which ceremonies do I attend? Of the, you know, There's many ceremonies at graduation week. We're going to talk about what does graduation day actually look like? We're gonna look at marching order and what marching order is and why it's connected to graduation. And then we're gonna have, we're gonna to touch base on some frequently asked questions towards the end. Again, post any questions you have in using the Q and A function. So let's talk about the actual ceremonies. So the 2023 KSAS Masters Graduation Ceremony, that's, that will be held on Monday, 22nd of May, 2023 at 7 p.m. That'll be held on Homewood Field on Homewood Campus in Baltimore, Maryland. The rain date for graduation will be held on Tuesday, the 23rd of May at three o'clock, also on Homewood Field on Homewood Campus in Baltimore, but it's not gonna rain. Mm -hmm. So that's, a just, that's purely a just in case. The post-ceremony reception on Monday evening, 22nd of May, we'll start at 9 p.m. on Kaiser Quad on Homewood campus. And then the 2023 university-wide commencement ceremony is scheduled for Thursday, 25th of May at 9 a.m. also on Homewood Field in on Homewood campus in Baltimore. So which ceremony do you attend? There are, so the 2023 KSAS Master's Graduation Ceremony is for master's graduates and their guests. The post-ceremony reception immediately following that, also master's graduates and their guests, and also there'll be faculty and staff will be there. The 2023 university-wide commencement ceremony, this will be for master's graduates and their guests, as well as anyone who is a certificate recipient and their guests. Thanks, Peter. I just wanted to come in and ask a commonly asked question. Um, could you please share what the difference between the KSAS master's graduation ceremony is and the university-wide commencement ceremony? Oh, sure. Thanks, Alexandra. Uh, so the KSAS master's graduation ceremony is a recognition ceremony. This is a ceremony where you're going to be, you, the master's graduates, will be recognized for your accomplishments. You'll walk up on stage. You'll be recognized by the dean. You'll get a sort of fake diploma as you walk across, take, have your photo taken, and come down. The university-wide commencement ceremony is a degree conferral ceremony. The graduates will be there. At a certain point, President Daniels will have everyone stand up. He'll confer everyone's degree, bachelor, master's, and doctoral, and then you sit down. Additionally. The uh, at the university wide commencement ceremony, the, the, the other difference is at the university wide ceremony, any master's 
students or certificate recipients who are there, you won't walk across the stage. You'll, you'll be there, you'll stand up, they'll confer degrees, you'll sit down. Whereas at the master's graduation ceremony, that's where the master's students actually walk across the stage. So let's talk about tickets because this is a common question that always comes up. What about tickets? So for the 2023 master's graduation ceremony, the post-ceremony reception and the university-wide ceremony, tickets are not required. When uh, And we'll talk about this in a few minutes when you log on to marching order, it'll ask about how many guests you're bringing. We're just looking for a head count just so we can have let facilities know. Peter, another common question is, is there a limit on how many friends and or family members a graduate can bring to the ceremony? Oh, sure. So the answer is no. The, the Homewood Field, where we're going to have graduation, the capacity for Homewood Field far exceeds any guest number that we would have there. So I think the, the capacity for the stadium is something like 18,000. We're not going to have 18,000 guests. So if you have guests and friends and family members that you want there, invite them all, bring them all. And we'll talk about this in a second, but in marching order, you'll be able to list, you know, how many guests are you going to bring? And we'll talk about that, but their tickets are not required and there's no limit to the number of guests you can bring. So now let's talk a little bit about marching order. So marching order is an online platform. It's an online, it's a website that we're using and that allows you, the graduates, this is where you're gonna RSVP for the graduation ceremony. You're going to confirm your preferred name for your on-screen listing. So the, the screen that they're talking about is when you walk across the stage, it's gonna have your name and you know it'll say Peter Huggins, Master of Arts in Communication on the sort of lower third of that screen as you walk across or you know, as I would walk across and you can, Within reason, you can confirm your preferred name for that. It'll also have, if you've got a name that uh, you want, make sure that we pronounce it correctly. There's a way area where you can add in a phonetic pronunciation. There's an option to have, you can record your name to let the name readers know how to pronounce it. We will have professional voice actors record everyone's name who's walking across stage. So that it, uh, so you'll have a little white card or a little yellow card that when you check in and when you get to the stage, there'll be someone there who will scan it and your name will pop up on the screen and then it'll announce your name as you walk across and that name announcer will be again, a professional voice actor. So it, they're really, really good. Additionally, in marching order, this is where you would add your emergency contact information. Just with any event, we just, always ask emergency contact information. It'll also ask you, are you attending graduation? Are you attending the ceremony? How many guests are you bringing? Marching order has a the actual, you know, the page, it has a limit of 10, one to 10. If you're bringing 12, that's great. Bring 12, bring, last year I had someone who reached out and they said they're bringing 22 people. Great, bring them all. Just let, let us know. There's a little thing where you can email us and you say, I'm bringing, I'm anticipating to bring 22 people to the graduation. That's great. Bring them all. I just need to know for head count so I can let facilities know, hey, facilities, FYI, according to marching order, I'm anticipating 3,500 guests. Great. Not a problem. Additionally, on marching order, you can add in your mobile number. Why would you add your mobile number onto there? It's for weather alert. So again, we talk about the rain date. If there's a rain delay, that's where we'll say, oh, hey, it's morning of, it looks like a little bit of rain is turning into rain, like heavy rain. We're gonna post, we might postpone to the next day. And in, if we do postpone to the next day, we would just send out like blast emails. We'll send text messages. We'll post on the website. We'll do everything we can to get as much information out to you in as timely a manner as we possibly can because we understand everybody's making making plans um, and we're you know we want to make sure that you have as much information as we can get you in a timely manner again a little bit of rain we're all going to get wet together that's me great a lot of rain we'll probably postpone 
Peter, um, if we could just go back to that last slide, please. We're getting a lot of questions about uh, when graduates can anticipate an email from marching order or um, up-to-date information on that, please. That's a, that is a great question. Um, I, our plan was that last Wednesday, you all were gonna get this email from marching order saying, huzzah, register today. There has been an internal delay with uh, our IT department and some uh, addendums between JHU Central and Marching Order, just making sure that we have, um, because of some new uh, regulations around student records. So that email was supposed to have gone out a week ago and we apologize. It is due out I, I every day. We are, all the school planners are pinging Central IT saying, can we send out? Can we send out? Can we send out? It is uh, a very high level topic for all the school planners. My plan was that, again, you were supposed to have had this already. Uh, we are hoping to, we are hoping to get this information just as soon as possible. I'm, I'm getting real time alerts from some of the other planners saying that, that like it's, it's being worked on as we speak. So I'm hoping this week, if not today, so, but those, we are aware that you have not gotten the emails. We're not neglecting you. We're just waiting on some, uh, we're working with our IT department in marching order. Oh, and I'm gonna jump back one final note. I went through the, so when people registered for this webinar, and again, thank you so much for joining us. We have almost 300 people here in this webinar, which just blows my mind. Uh, it's wonderful. I went through, and if you registered, whatever email you use to register for Mark for this webinar, I went through and updated on my Excel spreadsheet that I'm going to upload to Marching Order. So, if you used a Gmail account to register for this webinar, I substituted your Gmail account into the spreadsheet instead of maybe an older JHU Hopkins email that you may not have access to. If you do have a preferred email address, you're like, oh, Peter. I want you to use this email address because this is the one I, I check all the time. Email me at aapevents at jhu.edu so that I know like, oh, this is the preferred email you have. And I'll, again, that way we can, when marching order, when those emails go out, they're going out, they're hitting you in the correct inbox. But yeah, we, we are, we're all over it. Hi, uh, Peter, would you mind reminding folks to use the q a box um i'm kind of missing i'm starting to miss some questions in the chat um so if you, everyone if you could please make sure you're putting questions in the q a so your questions don't get lost in the moving chat box yeah a lot of, there's again there's like 300 of you which is great and again if you post it in the q a section and not the chat then we can number them and we can keep track of them the chat just scrolls through and we lose some of the questions so if you've posted a question in the chat Go ahead and post it in the Q and A. That way, there we can sort of we can go through and get those questions answered for you, and we can kind of keep track of them. So let's talk a little bit about regalia. So what is regalia? Regalia is the traditional cap and gown that's worn in graduation. It consists of the black motor board, that sort of weird flat cap with a tassel. There's the black gown, and with in the case of Johns Hopkins, there's a little bit of gold trim on the black gown. And then there's the hood. The there are different colors on the hood represent different degrees conferred. So for example, the, the sort of five areas of conferral that we have are the Master of Arts programs. Your hood, your hood will be white with black on it. The Master of Biotechnology Enterprise and Entrepreneurship will be gold with black. Master of Fine Arts will be brown with, again, with black. Master of Liberal Arts will be white, and the Master of Science will be gold. And again, the colors just, just sort of uh, represent the different degrees conferred. At other universities, you may see lots of different colors, and it's just, it's sort of specific to the university. So here's a, here are some candid photos of staff. I'm, we have these here. So when you're, you're at graduation, and you're like, who do I talk to? I need help with my Hood. I need, I have questions. The staff will all be around wearing these blue polos. They say Krieger School of Arts and Sciences on them with our lanyards, graduation lanyards. 
then you'll know, oh, I need, I can talk to them. They'll be able to answer my questions. And then you see the, the photo there of someone getting assistance with their hoods. And in this case, you can see his hood has that has brown on it. So he would be a master of fine arts. As I mentioned before, after the ceremony, after the master's graduation ceremony, there is the post ceremony reception. This will be held on Kaiser Quad. Again, master's graduates, their guests, faculty and staff will be there, champagne and dessert nibbles, and it'll run from nine until 11. So let's talk about some of the nuts and bolts about graduation. So where do I go for graduation? On Monday, May 22nd, at 5 p.m. is the start of graduate robing, check-in, and lineup. So you're going to go to the, and I'll, I'll have a map in a second. I'll show you where, like, where things are. You're going to go to the O'Connor Recreation Center into Scott Gym, and that's where you'll actually go wearing your regalia. And you'll go there, you'll check in, you'll get your name card, and you'll line up alphabetically by your program. At 6.30 p.m., the procession will begin and you'll walk, you know, two by two out of the Scott Gym around in front of the Athletic Center onto Homewood Field. At 7 p.m., we'll have the start of the ceremony. And then at the conclusion of the ceremony, after everyone has sort of at the recessional, at 9 p.m., we'll have the post-ceremony reception again on Kaiser Quad. So here's a map of campus, and this is just sort of like a general map, and we'll drop a link to this PDF into the chat. The, the takeaway for you, for you all, is on the right side of the graphic there, you can see where Homewood Field is. And that's where graduation will be. And if you're looking at the graphic where the number 34 is, that's the side where the stage will be built. To the left of Homewood, Homewood Field there, there's a series of buildings. That's the, the athletic center and that traffic circle. So like when you're like, where do I go that day? You want to go to that traffic circle and we'll be there and we'll sort of direct people into the athletic center. In the middle of the campus there, you can see Kaiser Quad. That's where the reception will be. And it's about a six and a half minute walk from Homewood Field. So just to sort of give you a sense of like, maybe you've never been on campus before. Again, we'll have, we'll drop a link to this PDF into the chat for you. So here's some photos to give you an idea of what graduation day is actually gonna look like. So at Scott Gym, we'll have a registration desk and there you'll go and you'll sort of check in with the enrollment team and you'll get your name card with your degree on it. And it has a scannable code that you'll, you'll carry that card with you up onto the stage and you'll hand it to one of the readers and they'll scan your, your, scan your card. Your name will show up on the screen. Your voice will be announced. We're going to have different areas in Scott Gym with step and repeat photo panels where you can have photos taken. And if you want to post to social media, you can do that. Uh, and then just an idea of sort of what's it going to be like. You're going to be sort of standing around wearing your regalia, talking to your, other, to your colleagues. And uh, Alexandra, if you could post into the chat where some of these our social media links are, if people want to if people want to um, tag AP or Krieger School. So here are some photos. This is, uh, again, what does it look like? The photo on the left, this is the procession. You're gonna walk out of the Scott Gym, wearing your regalia, walk around in front onto the field. On the right side, this is the recessional. We've had the ceremony. It's 8.45, nine o'clock at night. Everybody's, it's been a beautiful day. Everybody's walking off the field. What does graduation actually look like for you? You'll be sitting on the field again with your colleagues. We're gonna have a, you know, a large stage built. The faculty be, will be sitting up on the stage with the Dean. There'll be multiple jumbotrons so that anyone in the audience, you know, maybe if they're not sitting really close, there's gonna be, I think four of those large screens throughout the field. So everyone will be able to see very well. And the picture on the right just gives you an idea of what it looks like for your family and friends are going to be sitting there in the stands, you know, dressed comfortably. We will have ADA, ADA accessible seating for anyone, anyone who's bringing guests who might have mobility issues, they don't want to walk stairs. We will have ADA seating on the field 
And if you're looking at the picture on the left where the stage is and the graduates are all facing, the ADA accessible seating will be on the right-hand side of that. So, and it's, it's very clear when people get there. And it, additionally, in marching order, you'll be able to list when you say one of the questions in marching order, when we eventually get that email out, will be, do you have someone who needs uh, accessible seating? And then you can email us here at AAP events at jhu.edu, just so that we can kind of keep track of that and make sure that like, yes, we have, we know this person's coming and this group is coming. Here's a photo of, and you know, sort of like one of our last photos we have, what's it like when you're actually in the ceremony? So this is during the, the recognition of graduates, you're coming up the ramp, on the left picture there at the sort of top of the ramp, you can see the Dean in blue, sort of in blurry. Right before there, there's someone with a scanner and there's, again, they'll scan your name card. You'll have your name shown up on the right, the image on the right, you can see the person's name, their degree. And then, you know, you'll get your fake diploma. There'll be a photo taken and then walk down. So now we're at the section of the event where we're just going over frequently asked questions. And if there's any questions that I have that I haven't answered yet, um, again, you know, ceremonies, there's a couple different ceremonies. One question we often get asked is, do I have to attend the master's ceremony? You don't. If you're if you are a master's graduate and you know you just want to attend one ceremony, you can opt to attend the university-wide ceremony. Understand that you won't, there's no recognition at that ceremony. That's a, a degree conferral ceremony. And that it's primarily for the undergraduate students who they're the ones who will walk across stage, you know, receive a handshake from President Daniels. The master's and doctoral students and certificate recipients are, are welcome to attend. You'll again, you'll just you would stand up, have your degrees conferred, and then sit back down. Another question we get is about. Uh, do you have to wear regalia at the graduation ceremony? And the answer is yes. You have to wear the regalia. You have to wear your gown and the hood, your you know cap. If for some reason you don't have, you know, something you have a problem with your regalia. Something's happened. The we will have the bookstore is open that entire week, and they'll have regalia there the week before graduation. There's a, a link to where you can purchase your, if you haven't already done so, you can purchase your regalia online through O'Call, and that's who we purchase our regalia from. There, this last year we had some, there were some supply chain delays. This year, my understanding is that people are ordering them and they're getting the regalia the next week. So I would say order your regalia now, get it out of the way, then you've got it. Give a chance for it to like hang it up, let it, let it, you know, de-wrinkle a little bit, and then you're good to go. Day of. Peter, something happened. The dog ate my regalia. We will have people from the bookstore at the gym who can help you purchase a new set of regalia. Last year, I had a couple of folks who showed up. They they were just like, they had travel problems. Their luggage got lost. They just, they didn't have the regalia. Everybody on the field wore their regalia. Another question that often comes up is, what do you wear to graduation under the regalia? My suggestion is, it's a festive day. It's the culmination of your of years of hard work. You know, if you want to if you want to dress up, dress up. It'd be wonderful. Understand that it's going to be May in Baltimore and it could be a little steamy. Also, you may be walking across uneven, you know, uneven surfaces. If you're walking on some of the sidewalks and the ramps, you also be walking down the field. So just keep that in mind as you're planning, as you're planning what clothes to wear. Another question that often comes up is questions about COVID-19 and for people who may have never been on campus. For those, and again, we'll post this in the chat, we're directing everyone to go to the, the JHU COVID information page. That's, that's where all the staff turn to when we have questions, so we just direct everyone there. Okay, so I'm going to just, it looks like Alexander is, oh, people are already getting their, their uh, regalia. This is great. I'm just kind of scrolling through the questions. This is great. Everybody's using the Q and A. I have a question for you, Peter. Um, when will when can graduates expect to receive their their real diploma? So if they go to the KSAS uh, master ceremony, 
Um, they won't be receiving their diploma there, but where, where, when will they get their actual diploma? Oh, sure. So the, there are two, there are two sort of date windows for that. So for domestic students, you can expect to receive your diploma eight to 10 weeks after the university-wide commencement ceremony. The registrar is going to go through all the records and make sure that, you know, all the, everything's, all the things have been checked off. They order the diplomas and they mail them out. For international students, mm -hmm. it's a slightly longer longer window and it's eight to 14 weeks for those. The diplomas are mailed out to whatever address you have listed in SIS. So if you are, you have an address in Baltimore, address in Washington DC or wherever, and you're gonna move a month after graduation, make sure that your the address in SIS is updated to a more you know, long-term or permanent address because you don't want the U.S. mail or whoever or shipping company to have to, you know, be trying to track you down to a different address, mail forwarding. But yeah, it's eight to 10 weeks for domestic, eight to 14 weeks international. Thank you, Peter. Oh, yeah. um, another question we're getting is about parking. Um, I'm not sure if you want to go back to the, the campus map slide, but um, we have a couple questions about where where people can park. Sure. So we're here at the map of Homewood campus. And on the right-hand side, you can see Homewood Field, number 34. And if you just sort of track your finger left along those buildings, you're gonna go to a building that's uh, number 63. And number 63 is the San Martin Center. And there's a parking garage there and that's the closest parking uh, that's the closest parking to Homewood Field. Additionally, and parking is free, by the way, for day of graduation. So you don't need to worry about that. Additionally, if you've got people like, but Peter, I just need to drop off folks who may not want to walk. I can park my car. Great. So if you're looking at Homewood Field, you can see where Homewood Field, and then you see the number 64 just to the right of that. That's Shelley Pavilion. That's the main entrance. You can drop guests off there. Just right, you can sort of pull up along University Parkway and drop them off. Just a few feet down from there, there's a sign that says North Gate. You can drop people off there. You can just, again, just sort of pull up, put your hazards on, let people get out and they can walk into to one of the three entrances there at the field. I would, I, yeah, so for that day, I would recommend people, you know, drop folks off and then drive over to San Martin Garage for parking. But yeah, that's a great question. So I'm looking at through, uh, I'm going to kind of go through some of the open questions. Megan answered, Anderson was asking, is a reception planned for the rain date? Most likely we'll have the reception after the rain date, also on Kaiser Quad. It'll be smaller, but yeah, we'll do the reception. The fall. So we'll have the ceremony from three to five. We would have the reception on Kaiser Quad from five to seven. Kind of going through, where should guests meet us after the at the end of the ceremony, in that track, when you're looking at this map here, there's that little traffic circle right in front, you know, next to the Homewood Field. That's where a lot of the graduates say, hey, we'll meet, you know, in that area or possibly somewhere on Homewood Field. The Homewood, the graduates on Homewood Field, you're only going to be taking up about half the field for seating. So you may say, oh, at the end of the ceremony, I'm going to walk to the back of the field and I'll be in the one corner. So I'm expecting there would be about 600 of us on the field. Uh, so we won't have a cast of thousands, but this will give you a chance of like, and you can send this link out to your fam family members and say, hey, I'm going to see, here's this map and we're going to meet over here. Just scrolling through it. Is there a recommendation of parking, San Martin? Uh, is there a link to review the recording and email out? Katie, I will not be emailing you this link. I will be posting us to the AAP YouTube channel in a day or so. Uh, and then it'll be up there forever and ever. Uh, but yeah, you can, I sort of speed talk through a lot of this and that way uh, you can, you know, kind of go back and say, and look at it. So there's a couple of questions about honors and valedictorian. At the graduate level, we do not, we don't, we do not recognize honors. We don't recognize there's no valedictorian for this, for the graduating class. Those are more for undergraduate and secondary school. Is there a dress code for the guests? Not really. 
Uh, it's going to be a hot day in May in Baltimore. Uh, I would tell your guests to be there to celebrate you. And if they want to dress up, let them dress up. And if they want to not dress up, no worries. The Anyway, my son is graduating undergrad three years after my master's grad. Can I participate in his process? That's awesome. Nalene, I would say uh, for you, send me, send us an email to aapevents at jhu.edu and we will connect you with the university-wide team and see what we can do. But that's so much fun. Someone, another, I saw another question about lineup and I see there's been a couple questions like, Peter, why do we need to show up two hours early? Why do we need to show up at five? Because there's 600 of you, give or take. And we need to check in. We need to have get 600 people through a check-in process between five and 6.30. And there's only going to be four or five people at the check-in desk. So there's just a bottleneck of people. It just takes us a few minutes. So uh, that's why we need to be, you need to get there early. If you get there at 6.30, and if everybody showed up at 6.30, we'd have hundreds of people we're trying to hand out their name cards to, and it would be unwieldy. So that's why we ask, you know, check-ins between five and 6.30. The earlier you get there, the easier it is. Just get your card, hang out, take some photos. There's a little bit of, of sort of hurry up and wait going on. As some of the questions, oh, so Taylor Knapp asks, what is a graduate has limited mobility? This is a, this is a, a question that comes up. It came up last year. So there are, for any graduates as well as faculty who have mobility issues, when you check in at the uh, downstairs in Scott Gym, because you have to go downstairs or down an elevator into the main gym, if you have mobility issues, we'll show you how to get back up using the elevators up to the main level. And where that traffic circle is, that's where you would, you would go out using the ramps and basically wait for the procession to come by. You'd say, oh, right, I'm going to stand next to that person. And you'd sort of slot in. And uh, that way you could you know, avoid any stairs. If you have mobility issues where you really have a hard time walking, uh, we would most likely have you, you could sort of give you a little extra time to get onto the field. For any, if you have like sort of more involved questions, again, reach out to us here at aapevents at jhu.edu. And Crystal had uh, asked about ADA accommodations. Again, uh, AAP events at jhu.edu. I, ma I monitor that. In there's I monitor that inbox and uh, address all ADA issues to me. Again, Peter Huggins. Um, Jacob, we will we'll get you the link to order the regalia. So the oh, this is a great question. Karen at Karen Harrington asked this. I order my regalia, where does it go? It'll go to whatever address, it'll be mailed to you at whatever address you ask them to mail it to you. Don't plan on picking up anything day of. The day of will be a little, there's a lot going on that day. Get it in advance, take it out of his bag, let it de-rink a little bit, try it on, make sure everything is like hunky dunky and go from there. Is there any information about people finishing in the summer being allowed to apply for graduation in the spring? So uh, Eddie, I'm not entirely sure if you are, are you if you're which which summer for graduates who finished in summer of 2022, they qualify to walk in spring of 23. If you're graduating in summer of 23, you would be you qualify for the the May 24 program. Kayla was asking, is there an online ceremony for graduates to be recognized if you're not able to be there? There is not. We have one, we do, we are live streaming the event, but the live stream is really a video audio feed for people, you know, to watch the in-person event. We don't have an online event, uh, you know, with name recognition for grads who aren't going to attend. Journey, if you're a dual student MBA, MA, should you attend both Cary and KSAS? Sure. I would say attend, attend either or both. And again, parking is free. The ceremonies will be live streamed. Additionally, they'll have uh, the online live stream will have captioning and in person, we will have American Sign Language interpreters on the field. Uh, if you, someone asked if they graduated in December of 2022, do you attend the May ceremony? Yes, this is a ceremony that you would attend. Stephanie asked about 
uh, vaccination status, again, I would refer you to the, the COVID page and any questions, reach out to them. Tara asked about the, the diplomas. It's eight to 10 weeks after the conferral. So once you're, you've completed your degree and you've applied to graduate, then the registrar's office after the degree conferral goes through and again, they go through the files, make sure everything, all the, you know, the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and that everything is, is taken care of. For questions about, you know, kind of going through and looking at best proof of degree until you get the diploma, you can request an official transcript. The electronic diplomas come, you can, you can go through the registrar's office and get an electronic version of your diplomas. You can get those really quickly. You can get those in a couple of weeks. Uh, the actual paper diploma is what takes longer. The online, the link to the online streaming for family members who aren't going to attend, we're not going to post that link until probably the week before because we won't get it from IBM. We use IBM as our streaming service. We probably won't get that link until much closer to the ceremony. And we'll be posting that through the uh, graduation website. So it'll be a live stream through that. Marlog asks, is all AAP, which is Advanced Economic Programs, in a gold stole for regalia? So no, there are Master of Arts. The, the hood has white, has a black hood with white on it. The Master of Science is gold with black. Master of Fine Arts, the Krieger School, is brown. So it's, uh, so no. Um, it's, the colors are specific to Master of Arts, Master of Fine Arts, Master of Science, Master of Liberal Arts or Master of um, Biotechnology Enterprise and Entrepreneurship. Uh, someone was asking, "Is oh, where is for Uber? Where do you pick up and drop off? For Uber, I would aim them to Northgate. So over by Homewood Field, drop off at Northgate, pick up at Northgate. And um, the official for for again question was about where do you initially meet before graduation ceremony starts." All the graduates will meet in, will line up inside Scott Gym in the athletic center. And that's where you're going to, that's where you're going to congregate. And then, so you're like, once you get there and your family goes sit down, you go into the gym and you're separated until the actual, uh, un, you know, through the procession and the ceremony. So uh, we had a question on the reception. The, like the graduation itself is an outdoor ceremony and it'll be beautiful and it's going to be starting at 7 till 9 p.m and the sun's going to set it's going to be gorgeous the reception similarly is an outdoor reception last year's reception was absolutely beautiful uh evening reception the heat of the day had eased and it's all outdoors again if there's a if there's a rain delay the reception will also be the next day also outdoors one of the questions I see is there's a question about like, what do you, what can you bring with you into the, on graduation day? The little things. So um, if there's no, if you're like, I'm flying in from out of town that day, there's nowhere to put your luggage because we're not going to have any place in the gym. There's not going to be a place to store it for graduates or anyone. <clears throat> so if like, if you're renting a car, leave your luggage in the rental car. Day of like at the ceremony, you know, bring your phone, bring your wallet, bring something small. The ceremony itself is going to be about two hours. If you have so and questions about the regalia, the master of science and masters of biotechnology, it's the same gold. Silly question. Can you write in your cap? Not a silly question. That's a great question. Um, you are allowed to, if you want to put something, you want to decorate your motorboard, you may decorate your motorboard. Here's the huge caveat to that. What I just encourage everyone to understand that there's going to be many people from many different cultures at the ceremony with, you know, many different cultures represented. So if you were like, oh, I'm going to write something in my cap that's going to be hilarious, you might find it hilarious. Someone else might be offended. Just keep that in mind. If you're going to like, if you want to like celebrate your degree program, you know, sure. But understand that, um, just keep that in mind. So if it's um, if it's, if it's an untoward distraction, we may ask you to remove it, remove your cap. Any questions? So I see Haley has a question about uh, honors or high honors be listed on the final transcript. I don't believe so. I think that again, at the master's level, uh, 
the transcript merely shows the uh, degrees and or the the classes and the uh, the GPA on there. Uh, if you had specific questions, you could reach out to the registrar's office. Again, uh, you know, out of towners, are there suggested hotels nearby? What do you recommend? Oh, sure. They're on the university wide commencement page. There is a list of hotels that they have. So if you go to commencement.jhu.edu, there's a they have a list of hotels in the area. Shira was asking, where is Scott Jim? So if you look at the map of Homewood Field here, and again, there's Homewood on campus rather, and there's Homewood Field number 34. Scott Jim is number 59 in that, that blue circle says 5959. That's Scott Jim. So it's sort of like you go to the traffic, you go to that traffic circle, and there's a, a series of stairs up there. On the map, it's not so clear. Day of, it'll be really clear where you're going. Because there'll be um so. Uh, Sarah Rose Stack was asking about, again, about vaccines and about booster shots versus vaccines. I will, I'm not going to be able to address, you know, should you be vaccinated, boosted. I will say this, that when you check in, when you get to campus and you check in, we're going to ask you for your name so we can give you your graduation card and show you where to line up. And then we're going to move on. So I hope that answers that question. Are we going to bring water bottles? You can totally bring water bottles, although we are going to provide, we will have bottled water for you in this in Scott Gym. So like you can, but you don't need to. Uh, don't, I would, I would not bring, like if you got like a favorite, you know, hydro flask water bottle that you always carry with you, understand you're gonna be sort of schlepping that around. So I might skip that. Stephanie was asking about tentative graduation. Send us an email on that because that's not me, not really something I can address right now but send us an email to AAP events at jhu.edu and, and we'll sort of forward it on to an enrollment team. Trisha was asking, can we buy the regalia in person at the Barnes and Noble? Absolutely. You can totally buy the regalia in person. You can buy it there. They're gonna, they already have it there. And you can say, you know, they'll have the gowns there. They'll have the caps there. They'll have your hoods there. You'll have, you know, they there is this really cool decorative tassel that they've got, uh, which is on our on the graduation page, which has got the university seal on it. It's really really nice. Um, so yeah, you can totally do that. Stefan is asking, do we need to bring ID? Sure. Like, if you you know when you're at check in, there might be a, it might be noisy. If you're soft spoken and they ask your name, you can say sure. Here's my ID. They're like, oh right, you're Stephanie. Great, P Peralta. There is your card. Veronica was asking, do we announce faculty that will be present at the ceremony for different programs at some point? We do not. Uh, uh, once for the once we do the student recognition as part of the ceremony, when the students come in by program, we announce the program, you know, now you know, now uh, recognizing Master of Arts in Communication. We don't we don't recognize the faculty for that. We just it's just for the students, and the faculty do not come down on stage and stand next to the dean. So it's just the recognition side will just be uh, Dean Chalenza, Associate Dean Donahue, and the graduates. Uh, one more time, if we receive regalia but not our official diploma, again eight to ten weeks after university wide commencement, can we get the streaming link ahead of time? No. Uh, because Macari, I won't have the streaming link until like the week before, at which point we post it to our website. How can we order photos post event from the ceremony? On your name card, so Grad Images does our photos for us. And we're going to have everyone, your best option here is on your name card, write your name, your email address on the back of that name card, because we're going to take that name card and give those cards in order of the, of when you walk across stage to the photographers to to uh, say, hey, here's everyone who walked across stage in this order. And then they can email you and say, you know, hey, here's, you know, dear so-and-so at this email address, here's a link to your photos. So uh, Thomas asked the, that, um, 
the MA in writing is, it would be, the MA in writing is a master of arts in writing, master of arts in science writing, master of arts in teaching writing. The master of fine arts is a slightly different degree. Do you get separate diplomas for each concentration? So we buy more frames or is everything printed on one? That's a great question, Sarah. I don't know the answer to that. Um, but if you email, maybe someone else knows. It looks like Alexander is typing. Are we organized by program in the lineup? You are. So Scott Jim is a big gym. I'll have one group vaguely, Master of Science on one side, Master of Arts on the other. And then within those programs, you know, Master of Arts in Communication, Master of Arts in Museum Studies, Master of Arts in Cultural Heritage Management, Master of Arts in Museum Studies, et cetera. And you'll line up alphabetically. The programs will be alphabetical and you'll line up alphabetically within your programs. Where do you register the guests? And you'll register that in marching order. The graduation fee uh, is an administrative fee uh, related to Hopkins and it's not, it's not uh, connected to the actual graduation ceremony. How long does it take to get the regalia? It's it's landing fast. It goes. It's, it looks like it's most people are getting ordering it. You know, one week they're getting it the next week. So the question on the food, and I've seen a couple questions about food. If you have uh, food specific questions, uh, you you've got food restrictions or food questions, you can always email me directly, aapevents at jhu.edu, and so that we can make sure that the you know if you've I you know you've got restrictions or preferences, just let me know about those directly. In general, the reception will be soft drinks, there'll be some champagne, there'll be dessert nibbles, pastries, cookies, trail mix sort of thing. The deadline, there's a question about the deadline. What is the deadline to register for the master ceremony? The deadline will be uh, third week in April. So uh, I'm looking at my wall calendar. I believe the Deadline is the 27th, that Friday. Um, but it'll be towards the end of April. And I will we'll be sending out emails through marching order. Like, if you haven't RCP'd yet, uh, I will definitely be sort of gently ping everyone and saying, hey, looks like you haven't registered yet. I haven't RCP'd. And again, these are just, I want to thank everyone. These are amazing questions that you all are posting and just comments. And I, as I said, so I'm just going through the chat. I'm seeing questions about, again, if you have questions about ADA parking, you can reach out to you know, AAP events at jhu.edu. Um, if you, by the way, if you're on this webinar and you haven't actually applied through SIS to graduate, you need to uh, reach out to the enrollment office today. And finishing some year I'm at, I'm finishing my course this semester. I'm currently enrolled in my last class. May 22nd is the correct ceremony for me. Yes, Samir. The if you're finishing your semesters, your coursework this semester, the May 22nd is the correct ceremony. Honors, again, honors are not, I don't believe honors are listed in the diplomas. Um, how do we gain access to marching order? Yes. Uh marching order emails will be coming out soon. We had hoped to get them out last week, but there's been a delay. Uh when we're working with central IT on that and hoping to get the, the email out this week, um, coming soon, well, promise. The, just great. Um, are there additional events around campus to meet other students? So that week, the only two events, there was only three events where they were, they were connected with the master's graduation ceremony, the post ceremony reception, and then university-wide graduation ceremony on that Thursday. We don't have any other uh, other receptions or events that week. Again, this recording will be posted likely later this week to the uh, Advanced Economic Programs YouTube page. Uh, and we'll get that out. It'll take me a couple of days to get everything on YouTube to get that uh, cleaned up and posted. Um, just scrolling through, uh, <laughs> congrats to Katie. Yes, you absolutely did it. Um, <laughs> uh, is there on-site parking if we're staying across the street at the colonnade? No idea. I haven't a clue. Um, the if you're completing our thesis this semester, it, to a, if you're completing your your course of studies this semester and you're coming up on May. Everything needs to be done 
all your your thesis all your work needs to be done in advance of the ceremony so um steps asking where can i find the fancy tassel the fancy tassel if you go to the um if you go to the the purchase regalia it's like after you you see the initial regalia like gown things it's like this the next page over and you can get your graduation announcements you get the fancy tassel and things like that okay um ceremony is not indoors it's the lineup is indoors the ceremony is outdoors so again if it's a warm day we're all going to be warm together and we'll have bottled water by the way for not only for you all in the gym but we'll have bottled water for our guests uh and then but yeah it's an on-field outdoor outdoor ceremony Sabina has asked a question about capstone thesis project. You need to follow up with your program director on that, on capstone. The, again, the live stream link won't be posted. It'll be posted to our, the uh, graduation page, probably the week prior to the ceremony. Faculty, I'm just scrolling through to make sure I got, um, and Alexander posted the nearby hotels. So, okay, I'm just going through, it looks like I'm, it looks like, surprisingly, I mean, did we get all the questions answered? Okay, last call. Were there any questions that you may have posted that I didn't answer? And Maria, sorry, can you read one last time the fancy chord? The fancy chord is, if you look in the chat, mm -hmm. it's on the, um, where you purchased your regalia, the first page of the regalia is where you purchase your hood the gown and the cap the next pages they have like the fancy tassel and you can get your uh invitations and things like that and if you have questions about uh honors or recognition things like that talk to your program director um because the individual programs i i would talk to your program director because they're the, they're the ones who could answer that question for you directly Oh, Jenny Harris, for those of us coming from out of town, what is an iconic place for picks? Kaiser Quad, which is where Gilman Hall is and the Eisenhower Library. Gilman Hall is the iconic clock tower on campus. That's where you go for your, um, that's where you go for uh, that, for like those iconic photos. So I see someone posting a question about I, anonymous attendee needs help with ordering regalia, reach out to me directly, aapevents at jhu.edu, and I can walk you through it. I can, we can do that offline. Uh, the question is, are we renting or purchasing the, the gown? You're buying everything. So you're buying the hood, you're buying the gown, you're buying the cap, you're buying the fancy tassel. You buy it, it's yours forever. There's no rentals. Tickets, do we need tickets? Nope, you don't need tickets. If you've got friends who want to come, nobody needs a ticket. They just show up, sit on Homewood Field. So again, uh, is everyone using the fancy tassel on cord? No, you don't have to. Um, it's an additional fee. It's like $15 extra for the fancy tassel. They're just really nice. And Marie Lim, you're correct. There is no limit for the number of guests invited. This is true for both university-wide and advanced economic and for the KSAS master's graduation ceremony. Invite them all, bring them all. And Cynthia, you, you, you guests do not need a ticket or as a current student, you can just walk in to watch a classmate graduate. Honor, and Denrique asks, honors is normally undergrad distinctions typically read. Yeah. Does Hopkins do distinctions for MAs? No, we do not. This is, this is just wonderful, everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, so thank you so much, everyone. I wanna wish you a wonderful day and uh, thank you so much for joining us. And I look forward to seeing everyone on May 22nd.